We have traditionally reserved the first part of November for a time of teaching on stewardship at Ascension. This coming weekend, I will be sharing a message that explores the reasons behind why we give. Now, don't worry, we won't be having any special appeals for funds or conversations about weekly budgets. No, this is going to be more of a why to give sermon rather than what to give. I know, anytime we talk about money, it is an uncomfortable conversation. Hey, not only for you, the hearer, but also for me, the speaker. You know, I can't be saying one thing and then doing another, at least not in good conscience. Plus, I have a family who's listening as well, and they keep me very honest. But at the end of the day, speaker and hearers, we're, we're all hearers of God's Word. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are then doers of that Word. And we are all at different points of our faith maturity. And it really shows in two main areas, giving money and praying on your own. Both of these activities are in secret, in that most people don't know who is giving or who is praying. We all appear the same on a Sunday morning, but there is a close connection between giving and praying. Neither activity makes us more or less loved children of God, but that is not to say that there isn't a striking difference in the depth of relationship with God between those who give and pray as opposed to those who don't. If you have a rich conversational life with God in which you are just chatting with Him about all different kinds of things throughout the day and keeping Him in the forefront of your mind and it's just a different kind of life than one that doesn't think about him nor talk to him as friend and confidant. Giving money is also a very personal activity like prayer, especially when it is done without the need of fanfare or recognition. When, when you don't need to have your name on anything, but you simply want to give in gratitude and thanks for what God has been giving to you, again, it's a very different kind of life than one who rarely or barely gives any money away, let alone money to God in His work. But no matter where you fall on the spectrum of little prayer, to praying all day, to little giving or amazing generosity, wherever your personal setting is, we often feel that that setting, wherever it is, is the best setting for us. We can't even imagine life where we are doing more than what we are currently doing, nor does it even seem desirable. Oh, maybe you'd like to do more, but you know that you just can't, at least right now. Since there is such a strong connection, though, between praying and giving, I'd like to suggest to you that if you increase one, then the other will rise to match it by either giving more or praying more, you choose, doesn't matter. Now, the reverse is also true as well, just keep that in mind. Now, the reason for the connection is that both praying and giving are tied to our relationship with Jesus. Talk more with Him and you'll find yourself more open to joining Him in His work, giving of your time and money all the while. Give more and you will find yourself that that investment leads to being more of an owner of the mission, and you want to talk with him more. You're not just a spectator or a consumer at that point. So here's my challenge. Why not venture on the kingdom of God and see if what I'm saying, if this connection is also true for you? And if you find that you, yeah, and something's happened in your life and you'd like to tell the story, I would love to hear it. You know, from my last video on near-death experiences, I got to hear a kind of a cool story from one of our members whose family member had a near-death experience. So if you find God doing something in your life from this, would love to hear it. Either way, until then, I look forward to seeing you all this weekend in Bible study and worship. Have a great weekend.